he was training, I was going to take him on. And he's like, come on then, come on then, like push it line, show him what you got, little Coley. Let me see what you got, if your dad's got And then I knocked it line and I just remember going, ooh. And I just thought, yeah, he's just not serious. And, and I thought I had a lot of time for that. This is Generations on the League of 72. Brought to you by Skybet. What is it like to have a son that's played professional football? Uh, for me personally, very, very proud. There's been ups and downs. There's been times when, uh, as a father, uh, watching you play, it's been, um, it's been difficult. I think, as a dad, you know what I'm like. As you've grown and you've enjoyed football even more, you know, you get to that stage whereby you know what you want ultimately. You just got to enjoy yourself. Having a dad who's played it's, I don't know, it's a mad one really, especially when he's done what he's done. But I say to a lot of people, day to day I forget who he is because for me, he's, he's just my dad. It's not until he'll come and watch me and someone will be like, oh, Andy Caldwell. I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. But to me, it's just my dad. And I think I've tried not to get caught up in the you know, living up to his name thing because it's just, it can't happen for me. It's just mm. that I've always tried to be, be myself. And I think the biggest thing is people see me like that rather than as his son, which always going to see me as, but I am my own person. But for me, having a dad who's been, done so much in the game, you're always proud, you know, it's always something to look at. And growing up, it's the reason why I wanted to play football. So for me, it's always been a massive positive. Yeah, I think, I think we, we, we're different as well because personalities were different, we're totally different. I, I, I wouldn't accept a lot of nonsense when I was playing. I was, I was vocal when it comes to things like that, but I think mean, my son, you know, he, he's, prepared, he's prepared to listen to things where but I'm not quite like that, you know, so yeah, we're a little bit different that way. Also with the different times we've played, I think it comes with different things and you've got to handle things differently. And I think there's certain things that probably go on now that never went on in that's yeah, day. Yeah, generations change. Yeah. Generations change and I think it's growing up in that, there's things they'll give me advice on and I'll say, yeah, yeah, hear it, but it just can't happen now because the generation is so different. You know, the, the, the maddest thing, watching my son when he was younger, yeah, it's crazy because he had no interest in football when he used to play in goal. Uh, Yoki used to say, call him, man. you got to talk to Devontae, he's playing goalkeeper, man, he can't have it. And we used to just laugh and joke about it because he didn't really enjoy playing football to a certain extent. He used to play in goal and then, um, I'm not playing anymore and that was that. So when he did finally get into it, and he's, for me personally, I, I didn't force him to do anything. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. If you're not, you're going to do whatever you want to do. Like I said, I think fortunate for me now to watch him play, it's, it's a great honour for me personally. It was just one of them things that I knew I could play it and I was probably better than most at it. But from a young age, I wasn't that bothered by it. It's just be something I did. I don't know, end of primary school, going to secondary school, when I realised school's not really for me. If you're not going to focus in school, then you best make sure that you put it all into football and I think that's when it kind of really turned for me. And do you know how much money I spent on private education? <laughs> huh? Unbelievable, out, man. But... Unbelievable. What did you learn about the game from me? I don't know, a good 67% of what I know is, is from you. I mean, I used to go through his old videotapes. I probably watched every United videotape that he had in a big box like this big and I've watched them all. Things he did and a little advice he'll give me, I think I probably learned a lot of what I do from my dad, although I think, you know, we play differently. Mm -hmm. But I just say like, there's probably two or three of my natural instincts that definitely come from my dad. I have this thing, he's, when he's watched me from 12, 13, he could, he could be anywhere in the crowd. It could be loud as hell, but he could do a little whistle and I promise you no one else and will hear it, but I'll hear it. Even, even on a game day now, the, the other day, I don't know where he's playing, but I heard him do it and it's a good 20,000. And I know he knows I heard him, but I blanked him because I was like, like, he wanted more from me. And I think it's just it's just the, those little things where I know going back as soon as he does that whistle, I know like, yeah, he needs to step it up. And I know exactly what he wants, so you don't even have to say it. I mean, if I asked him, he'd give me advice. I mean, I would have probably wanted him to give me more advice, but at the same time, I'm happy he hasn't because he's let me go and find my own way. And now find my own way, we can talk about it. He talks about it from how he sees it, how I see it and then we kind of just review it and then we go from there. I'm, I'm not pushy then. I've, I've, I've seen it throughout my years, obviously playing and then retiring and you've got people trying to live their dream for their children that can't happen with me. I've lived my dream. Uh, my son's got his own dream now. To what level he gets to, that's down to him. What's your earliest memory of me playing football? Goalkeeper in the back yeah. garden. I think that's settled, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Goalkeeper, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was he in goal though? Terrible. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna lie still. I, <laughs> as I sit, sit here and reminisce about certain things, you know, is, you know, when he got into the academy, he goes to, went to Man City at the academy. Uh, Man United wanted to go to the academy, I brought him over there. I remember him saying, my dad, I don't like it. And it wasn't for me to force him to say, oh, you got to go to Man United Academy. I said, OK, that's not a problem. You know, you go where you're happy. When I think when kids are young, you know, you've got to do what makes them happy. Uh, and he was happy at Man City. And he's forced lifelong um, relationship with a lot of the guys there that he played with at that age. So, yeah, I, I think that for me, that was the most important thing, to see things like that, not to be like told by his dad, oh, you, you have to go at Man United or you got to go here, you got to go there. Earliest memories of him, it's always going to be United, Old Trafford. But like what I can really, really remember where I could like take it and understand what's going on. There'll be his times at Fulham, Blackburn. I went a lot of weeks, could sit down, I could really take in football. More. My earliest memories will be, I'll be running around with the other kids at, at Old Trafford, just waiting for him to come out, but you're not really mm. focusing on football at that point. I'm just running around with chocolate in my hands, just waiting yeah. for the game to finish. When I really started to take it in, it'll be like, we used to probably go every week when he was at Blackburn. And his time is at, at Fulham, and I think that's when I could really take it in and understand mm. what's what's going on. I enjoyed that just as much as probably my other memories because I don't fully remember them. When, when, when you're at that stage and you have your first child, as a footballer, you always try and build your life around your children as well, you know? Early parts are difficult. I was always away a lot, you know? I think when you're playing for a club like Man United, you know, if, if you get three days at home, you, you've done well. I mean, we was on the road. If we're not in Europe, uh, we travel into a, a game midweek or whatever. Just to try and bring your kids up and, you know, spend as much time with them as possible, it's, it's, it's tough. All, all those memories are always going to be very, very special for me, definitely. Who was the most entertaining player you ever played with and why? Entertaining? <sighs> I've played with a few of them. Is this entertaining as in funny or on the pitch? You okay? Yeah, uh, so go away with it. Yeah, in, 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 in the dressing room. David May is an absolute balloon. He's an absolute balloon. Love him, he's so funny. Butty, real funny guy as well. So yeah, I've, I've, I've played with so many people that are good on the football pitch and brilliant off the football pitch as well. And they, they kind of like marry it all together in, in, a, in a dress room. So in good dress rooms, you, you will always have people that will always make you laugh and joke. Tensions are high, they can cut the tension, get everyone laughing and joking, so yeah. Going back to growing up, when I was coming through City, I think you know, he's on the sky all the time now, but Michael Richard, he's just, he's hilarious, he's too funny. And he, he was always good with me coming up and like all the younger boys, but just spending time with him and being around him and like people like Jolene Lescott. And you know, even the company, he was good coming up, but I just think Richard, just whatever he said, she's comedy, you can't take him serious. I mean, I think I remember one time I was, I was gonna, he was training, I was going to take him on. And he's like, come on then, come on then, like push it line, show him what you got, little Coley, let me see what you got, if your dad's got and then I knocked it line and I just remember going, ooh. And I just thought, yeah, he's just not serious. And, and I thought I had a lot of time for that. I remember when, when I, I joined Man City, I went straight out to um, Tyler, met him all on tour. And Mike was a very, very funny kid. He was, he was playing centre midfield then. I got a nickname for him, I call him Topper because he, he absolutely smashed this kid. He went over the top of the ball and that. So far, then I've always called him Topper, but we've always had a good laugh and joke, Mike. He's, he's a good boy. What about in terms of ability, people you played with, who stands out to you? It's, it's got to be David Silva, I think. But I think I remember like one moment we was we was training, I think, mini games, and he's got on a ball half turn, and I, I've made a run this way, and he's reversed it that way, and the ball's rolled for on goal, and he just looked at me, and I, I just looked up and said, I, I didn't even see the ball. And it's just, that was the moment I was just like, yeah. And I think so some of the boys around me were just laughing and I just thought, it's just, it's a different level. And he always say, if you're on his team, you win. And it was, it was as simple as that. Right, in, in a full season, yeah? Playing in, in the same team, who would score more goals between me and you? If we're on the pitch together, are we playing like that or son? Or are we playing it's me against you? Because if it's me against you, then it's me against you and see what happens. But if it's dad and son, you're going to say me because you're going to give me the goals. I know I'm scoring more. <laughs> and there uh, we go. I already know. I, I know I'm scoring then, more. So yeah, if it's me against Timmy, it's just, yeah, it'd have to be seen because I'm going to back myself like he's going to back himself. Nah, That's I'm, I might miss a few games. I might take a few tickets in that. See, he'll miss a few games. I don't miss games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So therefore, he's missing games. I'm just exactly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm that's just hopping up. I mean, that's where the personality is different. Yeah, I'm, I'm letting my teammates know as well. If I've got, was it 46 games? Mm. I'm bagging 30. 30 goals, definitely. So I think that for me, that, that's the big difference between, I think, obviously the Premiership and the higher to League One because it's it's on your days, anyone beats anyone. Yeah. We could rock up to 
first in the table and we could beat them 3 0, bottom of the table could do it up to top. And people go, it's a shot, but it's not a big shot. Whereas in a Prem, that rarely happens. If it happens, everyone's like, oh my God, we're in League One. It's almost every other week, someone rocks up here, beats them. One thing you wished for my career? Just enjoyed it. Wish. Yeah, I, I wish that he just enjoyed it. Obviously, it's not a case of you trying to get to where dad got to. It's what, what I had done is, is in the end, it's, it was freakish for me in the end. I've always wanted you just to go out and enjoy your football, express yourself and get to the level you believe you're good enough to get to. I, no, that, that's, that's always been my dream. Football is so up and down. Yeah. You know? yeah. we, we've been there, we've been there, you know, with people have let, let you down. They can turn and say, well, yeah, you let them down as well. I, I, I understand all those things because ultimately I went through the same thing when I was younger, as you know, so it's... Is there one moment for you in your dad's career that you kind of wished you were there for? Nah, do you know what? I, I probably I wish I was, the, I was there for the day he retired because he, he just come over when he said, yeah, I'm done. But, but I, I wish I'd seen it on the pitch that day. I think that, that's probably the day I, I wish I'd seen. Because when he come over, I was on the stairs and I was just laughing to myself, thinking, I wish I was on the training pitch to see it. But I think other than that, I've I seen all the good moments I've watched him. I think mean, that's probably the, the one moment that I really wish I got to see him just go, yeah, this is me. I just literally I, remember it like it was yesterday. I don't, I didn't care when I was done that because I was, I, I knew then the generation was changing because the younger gen was more interested on the night out after losing five one instead of the tournament. I said to myself, you know, I'm going home, I'm going to chill. Nah, they say it for me. And then the, the manager, <laughs> when, when the manager's in a job and he picks a team and the chairman comes in and changes the team, I'm like, you're the manager, aren't you? You make the decisions. When the chairman start making decisions for people, and I remember just saying, look, I'm done, you know. What has been your proudest moment in my career? Uh, your uh, debut, yeah, it was real special. Uh, and when you played for England schoolboys as well, because the first game got cancelled, remember? Yeah, 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 I do remember that. And then finally the, the game comes and you, you make your debut in that. Yeah, that, that was very, very special as well. My son's very big on that. He needs to make me proud. Like he's, he's already made me proud. When I'm when he made his debut, I think for me it must be the proudest day of my life when he made his debut. And like, people say, about how cold you played in the Champions League final, you've done it. It, it. it doesn't substitute that. What your kids going to do something? Nothing substitutes that. So yeah, I, he's already done me proud. So when he got his hat trick, the first day of the season, I was buzzing because last season I seen him get a brace, got a brace. But never got the hat trick, so yeah. didn't get the hat trick this season. Yeah, and due the hat trick. Yeah, yeah. Well, overdue the hat trick. So I, I should have had a few more, but it was nice to get it on the first day. For me, I just I know the levels, and if it's not reached, it's not good enough for me or or for my dad. And for me, that's that. It's it's black and white, but I, I'm happy with it that way. Yeah, I, I think for me personally, it's, it's just passion. I I, I, I want to see my son get to the level he believes he can get to. Because I always say say to my kids, tomorrow's not a given. I mean, so I, I want to see my kids elevate themselves, get to a level, enjoy what they're doing. What's kind of your proudest moment of your dad's career? I can't, was it called the Worthington Cup? Back, yeah, League Cup. League well, Cup. What was Worthington Cup? Worthington yeah. Cup back then with Blackburn. Yeah. Because I can really remember that. I mean, I remember he winning things you had, but I don't, but I was invested in that. And I remember it like yesterday, stadium with the closing roof and winning that at Blackburn was probably a specialist winning maybe an FA Cup at United because it was it was unexpected and you know he's drove them there a lot of the a lot of the reason why they got there was him and I think yeah that's probably one of my proudest moments for him because I see how much it meant when he lifted the trophy. Yeah and I, I needed that. I needed that. That's, that was the only one I hadn't got. My time at Man United the, the manager we used to play um the young kids in that competition or we'd get knocked out early doors. I remember when I, I joined Blackburn and there was uh semis and I was just saying to myself that if I can try and help these guys get to the final and have the opportunity to try and win it, because they'd already done the hard work. That was like winning my first Premier League trophy. The buzz for me was was massive because I've completed the whole set then. Mm -hmm.